Welcome, honored students. I trust that you are well. Today, we're going to actually begin the last section of chapter 14. Today, we'll begin 14.4, Mixtures and Movement. I'll cover this particular section in two virtual lessons, today and one on Friday. Uh, on Friday, I will also post for you on Moodle our study guide for the test, which you probably noticed in WenWeb is upcoming next week. So we are going to work to wrap up this section. As you know, this whole entire section was about gas and the properties of gas with changing environment. And now we're going to talk about different gases combined together and their pressure, something that's gonna be known as partial pressures and total pressure. So that's what 14.4 is about. So we start off with a case file. And when we look at this, it says, why do balloons filled with helium deflate faster than balloons filled with air? Now we've all experienced this. You've taken a balloon and you've blown it up and you've tied a knot on the end and you set it down. You come back later on, the balloon is uh, it's not as large as it was. Uh, if you bought store-bought helium balloons or you've blown them up yourselves and you tie that knot on the bottom as tight as you can, it doesn't matter it continues to lose air. And how is it losing that the air or the helium out of it? Well, we're gonna learn in our second virtual lesson that there are pores and the gas escapes through those pores. It's a process called effusion, effusion. All right, so let's look at Dalton's law. So this is a new term for us. Hopefully in your notes, you will jot this down. Dalton's law. How is the total pressure of a mixture of gases related to the partial pressures of the component gases? And that's what we're going to be looking at. That's the key concept. And it's called Dalton's law of partial pressures. So gas pressure results from collisions of particles in a gas with an object. We learned about that already. If you have a container, which will just put a container right here and you have gas in it, the molecules are gonna be striking the sides and that is gonna be causing pressure. The more kinetic energy they have, the more pressure is gonna be in there because it's directly related. So if the number of particles increase in a given volume, there's gonna be more collision. So if I have a container, so I just, I have this container back again right here and I had one mole, and I increase it to three moles. That makes sense that there's gonna be more collisions. There are more particles in there now, so there's more opportunities to strike, and there's more opportunities to strike the side, so the pressure will increase. And we also learned with the ideal gas law, it's directly related to the moles. <clears throat> so, if the average kinetic energy of the particles increase, there's more collision. So if you raise the temperature, remember what temperature is. Temperature is the average kinetic energy, a measurement of the average kinetic energy, and that's in Kelvin. Remember, all the gas laws deal with Kelvin. They do not deal with Celsius, so please don't forget that. So if you increase the average kinetic energy, that means the particles are moving more rapidly, thus the collisions are more frequent, which means that the pressure will be higher. So in both cases, increase of pressure occurs. So if you have more particles or you raise the average kinetic energy, you increase the pressure. So particles in a mixture of gas at the same temperature have the same kinetic energy. So think about that. Temperature is a measurement of the average kinetic energy. So look at this right here. So we will do the Boltzmann distribution here, like that. And let's say right here is the average kinetic energy. It doesn't matter what type of gas you have in there. Maybe you have all helium, maybe you have carbon dioxide, maybe you have uh, like xenon, uh, any of those, it doesn't matter. Very small to large, xenon is a very large uh, molecule in itself. So, it doesn't matter if it has the same temperature, it has the same average kinetic energy. That's a real important concept. So the kind of particle doesn't matter. Like I said, it doesn't matter what kind of gas, helium, argon, uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, dinitrogen pentoxide, all those doesn't matter. Same temperature, it has the same average kinetic energy. 
So let's define partial pressure. So the contribution that each gas in a mixture makes to the total pressure is called the partial pressure exerted by that gas. And we usually write it like this, P with a little p, and that's the partial pressure. If we have P with, a, with the T, that's the total pressure. So partial pressure is the contribution that each gas makes. So please make sure you write that in your notes, exerted by that gas. So if you have four different gases and you add up the partial pressures of each of those gases, now you have the total pressure because each gas is independent of itself. Remember, they are not reacting, they're a mixture, they're just there and their kinetic energy is going to have to be applied in the total pressure when you look at it in that light. So let's look at air. So the air around us right now is, we're at sea level, so we're talking about 101.32 kilopascals. We could also say 1.00 atmospheres, ATMs. So if you look at this, what makes up the air around us? Well, it has a lot of different gases are in there, mostly nitrogen, 78.08% nitrogen. Then there's the oxygen that we all need, 20.95% oxygen. Here's carbon dioxide, what we exhale, uh, basically 4%, 0.4%, sorry, 0.4%. And then you have argon and other gases, maybe some helium, carbon, dio carbon monoxide, uh, all there, and that's less than 1%, comes out to less than 1%. But notice, they all have their own pressures. Just put my little arrow over here. They all contributing to that 101.3 kilopascals. That's the total pressure. They all have a contribution. Each one of those gases contributes to that total pressure. And you could say this is the pressure partial of nitrogen the pressure of oxygen, the pressure of carbon dioxide, and that's how you would write that, uh, is the pressure partial. And you, once you add them up, now you have the total pressure. So key concept, in a mixture of gases, the total pressure is the sum of all the partial pressures. So here is Dalton's law, another term for us, so please make sure you drop that down. It was a chemist, John Dalton, he proposed this law. Dalton's law of partial pressure right here, please make sure you jot this down, that it states that at constant volume and temperature, the total pressure exerted by a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the component gases, the gases that made it up. So if you talk about two gases mixed together, the total pressure is the sum of both goes both of those gases partial pressure you had three gases same thing it's the sum of the three gases or four it doesn't matter and here is our formula right here so pressure total equals the partial pressure one plus partial pressure two plus partial pressure three plus partial pressure however many there are could be a lot other gases and typically you would write it like you saw that I did there it'd be pressure if it was oxygen it'd be pressure of oxygen pressure of helium and so forth you write the capital P with uh, in lowercase letters on the bottom of it whatever gas component you were talking about so you add them all up and that gives you your total pressure so we're going to look at some examples of this so first off we have here HELOX. HELOX is used a lot in diving. Uh, it is for deep sea diving. So each component gas exerted. So when you look at the total pressure of HELOX, it's 500 kilopascals. But when you break down what of each gas is in there, you have helium and oxygen. Well, helium is contributing 400 kilopascals and oxygen is contributing 100. You can just add them together. That equals 500 kilopascals, and that's what it has over here as the pressure total. And that is how you would do it. So it would be partial pressure of helium is gonna equal 400 kilopascals, 
pressure partial of oxygen equals 100 kilopascals. You add them together and that gives you your total. So it's the sum of the partial pressures. So let's look at this example problem. Air contains oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and trace amounts of other gases. What is the partial pressure of oxygen at 101.30 kilopascals if the partial pressure of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and the other gases are? 79.10 kilopascals for nitrogen, 0 0.040 kilopascals for carbon dioxide, and 0.94 kilopascals respectively. So let's look down. First off, in all of these type of problems, write down everything given to you, and that's what they do here. They write down the nitrogen, the carbon dioxide, and the other gases, and they have their total pressure. And what they're solving for is right here, the oxygen. So they know the total pressure. So would it make sense that they need to add up all of these component gases, subtract it from the 101, and that would give you the oxygen? That's exactly what they're going to do. So they write their formula down, and then they write it here, pressure total equals. Pressure, partial pressure of the nitrogen, partial pressure of the carbon dioxide, and the partial pressure, pressure of the other gases all added together minus from the total. So they plug it all in. So they have the 101.3, and here they go. They minus all, add those and minus it off the total, and now that gives you the partial pressure of oxygen. So very straightforward math in this case. So let's look at a checkpoint question. So maybe you want to pause the video for a second and try and work this one out, and then I will work it as soon as you press, press play again. All right, hopefully you pause it. So let's take a look at here. It says a tank used by scuba divers has a pressure total. So I'm going to write here, my pressure total equals, and it is 2.2. 2, 1 times 10 to the fourth kilopascals. If pressure of nitrogen, so my pressure of nitrogen equals 1.72 times 10 to the fourth kilopascals, <clears throat> and pressure of oxygen, pressure of oxygen equals 4.6 for one times 10 to the third kilopascals. What is the partial pressure of any other gas in the scuba tank? All right, so it's telling me there could be some other gases and I have a total pressure and it just wants to know the sum of the other gases. So I could write this out like so. I could go my pressure total equals the pressure of nitrogen, partial pressure of nitrogen, plus the partial pressure of oxygen, plus the partial pressure of other gases. So now let me fill in what I've written down here. So I have 2.21 times uh, 10 to the four, kilopascals. And I am going to minus off of that the sum of the gases that I'm given. So I have 1.72 times 10 to the fourth kilopascals plus 4.641 times 10 to the third kilopascals. All right, so let me get my calculator here. So I'm gonna go 2.21 EE to the fourth. And I'm gonna go minus, I'm gonna go 1.72 fourth plus 4.641 to the third. Seven, two. 
States. All right, so it comes out to the pressure of other gases equals 2.59 times 10 to the second kilopascals. And that should be my final answer on here. And that's what they get as well. So in this case here, I had to add up the gases given to me, take it away from the total pressure. So that gives me the lone set of gases uh, that were contributing to that total pressure. And they've done the same thing that I've done here. All right, let's look at one more problem and this particular section will be over and then we'll look at another one on our Friday virtual lesson. So a scuba tank is filled with trimix, oxygen, helium, and nitrogen for deep sea dive. So whoever was going to do this dive was gonna go probably over 200 feet under the water. Uh, and you don't really want just air because you can get what's called nitrogen fixation and uh, causes hallucination and is, is very dangerous. That's why they have more helium than nitrogen so that effect doesn't take place. So the tank has 23.82 atmospheres of oxygen, 166.75 atmospheres of helium, and 47.64 atmospheres of nitrogen. What is the total pressure in the tank? All right. So right away, I need to write down a few things here. So I have my pressure total is going to equal the pressure partial. And it says here I have oxygen uh, plus the pressure partial of helium plus the pressure partial of nitrogen. That will give me my total pressure. So when I look at what they've done here, they are actually giving me all of my partial pressures. So my pressure of oxygen is right here. It says 23.82 atmospheres. Plus my pressure of helium is 166.75 atmospheres plus my pressure of nitrogen which in this case here is 47.64 atmospheres and I, if I add all those it gives me my pressure total so let me plug this in my calculator I have 23.82 plus 166.75 plus 47.64. So I significant figures with addition, I cannot have more decimal places than the least number of decimal places. In this case here, it's the hundredth position. So when I plug this in the, ca in the calculator, my pressure total is gonna equal to 238.21 atmospheres. So that is the pressure total in that scuba tank for this particular dive. And that is correct with significant figures. So please don't forget your significant figures and the rules that are applied to significant figures because addition is different. Addition and subtraction, you cannot have more decimals than the least number of decimal places. When you talk about multiplication and division, you cannot have more significant figures than the least number of significant figures. Uh, so please be mindful of that. You have a worksheet that's due today and you have a worksheet that's coming up due on Thursday. So please be mindful. Those are accuracy grades. So I'm going to be looking at the correct answer and correct significant figure. So please take a little bit of time on that. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Dalton's law of partial pressure is what we just covered. On our Friday virtual lesson, we're going to call, talk about Graham's Law of Diffusion. Graham's Law of Diffusion. So that's our last virtual lesson for this particular chapter. So thank you for watching. Go in peace.